Now entering the final set of games of the season, Israeli Super League teams face off, some looking to avoid elimination. The Greens of Maccabi Haifa are set for a return to the playoffs after a two-year absence, this time as a top contender. American players, now adjusted to Israeli style of play, take advantage of their opportunities in a foreign land, learning more about its people and their sacred culture, as well as their contributions to the world. Inside Israeli basketball is brought to you by Israel. Seeing is believing. Hi everyone. This season, owner Jeff Rosen wanted strong leadership to rebuild his team. The first step was importing American coach Brad Greenberg, who brought with him the type of discipline and direction needed to guide them through a long season. It's been working. Stagger, keep going, Stagger, get the next. The biggest adjustment for some of our players you know, has been that uh, you know, we only play one game a week. So the guys that aren't used to that, that's, that's a big adjustment. The American players, for them to have five days of practice in between every game, uh, it gets a little boring for them. So I've had to, I've had to adjust some of my practice routine. Uh, you know, we have to play a little bit more. Nice play, Bry. Drill a little bit less. I've adjusted a little bit, they've adjusted a little bit, and uh, you know, so far it's working. Nice play, Jay. Good, Dante. Good, good, good. Nice, nice, nice. There's not such a big difference between Brad as a U.S. coach, as an American coach, and uh, Israeli coaches. You're going to be able to come into the middle, his man's going to help, and you're going to get that pocket pass right there. I think it's more uh, more attachments to the local league. Even if you bring, uh, I don't know, Pat Riley to be the coach of Maccabi Haifa, uh, in some way we'll have to adjust because it's uh, it's basketball, but it's different basketball than what he used to coach in the States. Here he is, corner, look at him. Nice play, Brian, good play. It's a smaller league, smaller players. Uh, there is not really a true big guys in this league, so you have to make adjustments. Well, I'm used to American coaches. I was in college for two years, so I know the, you know, the, the style. Good screen. I don't know. Maybe sometimes Israelis are uh, more uh, over tactical, and sometimes we think of solutions more. And with Red, you know, sometimes it just he let us play. Shoot it! Shoot it! with me as a coach versus, you know, how some teams I've played over the years, you know, with Israeli coaches. Um, there is more uh, pick and roll action in international basketball than anywhere else. We have a different kind of team than, than how a lot of Israeli teams are built, so we play a little differently. We, we're a little bigger, we're a little more physical. We screen a little bit more with our big guys. I, I don't think, you know, the basketball is so different, uh, but some people think we are a little bit unique in some of the things we do. If we just are a tight, strong team that plays to our strengths, okay, we're gonna beat him. So I would say it's a little bit different, uh, you know, than I'm used to. But I mean, he really, uh, I mean, he's more of a player's coach. I mean, I think he really understands, uh, you know, I mean, we have, we have a, you know, a certain number of guys and stuff that play, uh, you know, big minutes. And even though we play one game a week, you know, it's getting later in the season and stuff. And uh, you know, I think he really uh, breaks down, you know, just about every play, every player, and, you know, it's good. They give you a nice, you know, thick, you know, stack of uh, papers on each guy and you really uh, break down, you know, what he likes to do, his tendencies, you know, what he's good at, what he's not good at. Screen out, screen out for him, look for him. I think he's kind of letting us play a little bit more, you know, he's kind of given us decisions as far as like, okay, we're going to do this in practice, do that in practice, if you guys play hard. And I think we're finding a good mix right now. But do it. Don't just go up and down without doing it. Like, work harder on defense than you are on offense right now. Let's see if we stop it. So hard show and ice, okay? But work at it. Work at it. What's a kibbutz? Kibbutz? I have no idea. I have no clue. What is a kibbutz? A car. Do, do, do people really know what that is? Is it like a Hebrew word or what is it? Bike, you know, toys. Didn't learn, I guess. And uh, it's a shame that you're in Israel and you never went to, to a kibbutz. It's, it's a nice experience. 
We asked that question before Lior Segev took Dante Smith to a kibbutz for some answers. Now Dante is armed with plenty of info to help educate his teammates. Have you ever been to the kibbutz before? No, I've never, never been. Man, I can't believe you've never been to the kibbutz, man. Yeah, I'm not Israeli. You gotta, you gotta take me to these places. I don't, My I don't friend know. Gabi is gonna take us to a tour here. He's gonna show us the place. No, you're going to like it. Uh, I don't look like I like it. It stinks. You're going to get used to the smell. How you doing, man? Your sense of smell will get tired. You won't feel it in uh, two seconds. Believe me. Right. That's it. Now it's much less. Two. Three. That's three. That's three. Smell now, it. now don't, sm don't smell through going. your nose. Anyhow, <laughs> smell through your mouth. If I can. <laughs> Here it's uh, the cow shed. You see, that's where the rest between the milking time. Now we're gonna go inside to see how they milk the cows in a very modern system. Okay, not by hand, by machine. You see what you see here on the, on the clock? You see the, how much milk she gives every day? You see, and you can know the average, and if she has any problem with the milk, like the milk is not good. So here we are, and that's... <laughs> Oh, s**t. <laughs> 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 you are killing me. Uh, do you want to stay here more? I or shall we go pictures, outside? Man. I don't, I don't take ah, some pictures. Ah, right. Take a picture of him. <laughs> whoa, s**t. Whoa, 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 whoa. whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Cows attack. <laughs> don't worry. Be happy. This is disgusting. <laughs> Look, they splashing duty and stuff everywhere. This is disgusting. This is disgusting. <laughs> a fly got up my face. Yeah. Hey man, you got on your shirt, man. You might want to get that off. Your shirt, man. Yeah, you might want to get that off of there. These men are worse than the cows. In 1946, the British came over here with 4,000 British soldiers, surrounded the kibbutz, evacuated all the members of the kibbutz, left here only children till age of 15 and few women to take care of them. And their task was to find illegal weapons in the kibbutz. So they start to dig inch by inch, feet by feet, the whole kibbutz, in order to find the illegal weapons that the Haganah, the Jewish organization, were bought and smuggled into the country in order to be ready for the independence rule. So let's go inside and see where the weapons are. Here we are in the old weapon kosher as it was. Beautiful. I think I'm a drive. <laughs> Let's go. We're here in Israel, in Yagur. In Yagur. In the kibbutz. <laughs> Pull up at the club, the girls just jump in. Yeah. Drop top Dante mobile, baby. So we have some kids of the kibbutz that have heard that you are coming and they really want to see you and to meet with you. Oh, cool. You want to go show them some tricks? Yeah, let's go. Shoot some hoops, man. Let's go. That's a carry, Leo. Let me see what you got on there. Give me a good dump. Oh. Maccabi! Everybody's here chilling out, surfing. So it's a good life here in the kibbutz.
inside Israeli basketball is brought to you by Israel. Seeing is believing. After visiting an agricultural kibbutz, Lior and Danta made a trip to the beach to learn about a kibbutz of a different kind. See, Dante, not all the kibbutz are farms. Some of the kibbutz are just by the sea. I used to come here as a kid. They teach here all type of things here, like surfing, kayaks, very interesting, fun. This is my friend Dante. Dante, this is Yam. Yam is an instructor here. He's gonna teach us, you know, how to kayak, how to paddle. All right. We're gonna have some fun. Okay, so we're gonna have a race? Yeah. We have a, you have a small kibbutz here, Nebeyam, and a small village next to it. Half of the people that live here uh, come almost every day to the beach. We surf here, it's a very surfing community. If you come on a big day with big waves, or in the summer, winter, the beach is like, everybody's here chilling out, surfing. So it's good life here in the yeah. kibbutz. I live five minutes walking. I don't like the other the kibbutz with cows no, and no, crab. We cows and no, we don't have cows in our kibbutz. <laughs> I need to come live over here by y'all with the water. <laughs> you have a wall over there, like a geyser, yeah. Like when, yeah, when there is a bit of waves, jumps out very high. When like the little kids, you like go into the holes inside. What? And like catch crabs. And, Stuff like that. Like, how do you find that anyway? Like, how do you find that? I don't know. It's like you know. It's like something right. everybody knows. Like your dad's dad. My dad's dad's dad. dad. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, we used to crawl true. inside. <laughs> like yeah, I used to crawl in that hole over there <laughs> and just go swimming and get some crabs. Life. Couldn't ask much more than this, right? Yep. This year's All-Star festivities took place in Haifa at the brand new Romama Arena. Host team Maccabi Haifa had five players selected to participate. Paul Stahl, Pat Kalathis, Dante Smith, Ido Kujakaro, and Gal Mekel. In the three-point contest, Paul Stahl was crowned the champ, showing why he is the league's best three-point shooter. The fans were especially excited for the dunk contest. After all was said and done, Hopawal Eilat's Scotty Hobson took the trophy home. In the All-Star game, the Israelis won for a third consecutive year, topping the Foreigners team 127-111. Koji Karo scored 14 points, and Meckel recorded eight for the Israeli team. Stahl tallied 14 points, while Smith and Kalathis each notched 12 points for the foreign team. Due to a brief labor dispute amongst Israeli players that was recently settled, games were postponed for several weeks. The third round of the season will now continue in April and will have major implications on playoff seeding. Maccabi Haifa has a chance to break the franchise record in wins for a season, team record, and team winning percentage. Never thought in my life I'd be doing this before. I bet you my biology teacher never thought this either. Israel has established itself as one of the world's technology centers, and Haifa is its tech center. The Technion is where much of the innovation originates. Well, the first thing when you come into Haifa, 
you see the large buildings of Google, you know, Microsoft. And it's very interesting to know that when we were told the Technion is where it starts. I've never been to MIT and supposedly this is the MIT of Israel, so I know my mom and dad would be happy that uh, I made it to uh, MIT's campus, apparently. <laughs> Go check this place out. Sounds good. This is the uh, Distributed Space Systems Lab. It's a uh, unique facility in Israel, nothing like it anywhere uh, in academia in Israel or in Europe. The purpose of this lab is to develop the next generation of satellites. So we can run a short demo just to illustrate the technologies we're working on here. So you're not controlling them at all there? Right? Yeah, everything is autonomous. So basically they're moving on the table by themselves. They're, they sense each other through sensors that they have and the camera, uh, the overhead camera there. Um, and this car here is, uh, we use it sometimes through this joystick just to um, simulate the motion of a moving obstacle. Mm -hmm. So we're going to launch three, so it's going to be the first ever three uh, satellites that are launched together into orbit in a couple of years. So no one has ever done it before, uh, launching three satellites together simultaneously. You guys are going to be pretty famous. We're famous already. <laughs> so the idea behind this system is that it's a uh, virtual reality rehabilitation system. So what we wanted to do is make a system that you could take out of the physical therapist's office and bring it to your home and would continually give you interesting and fun uh, exercises for rehabilitation. All right, so if you want to do, what you want to do is you're going to want to try and touch the ball. And we got some music playing too? Yeah, the music is louder when you get better at it. So the closer you are to the ball, the louder the music is. Come on, music. Look at you over there dancing. This is the Biodex body weight unloading device. It's meant for unloading percentages of your body weight while you're walking. Let's say somebody's overweight and he wants to start working out, mm -hmm. we can put him in this device and let him more easily and more efficiently start working out. And then slowly, slowly he'll get back to his regular weight. did a great job. Thank you. I got all of that. Well, I'm going to show you guys something too. There's the court, there's the basket, free throw line. They pass it back out to me and I shoot a three. Make it and we win. Everybody obviously is going for a different job or if you guys try to go to the United States and get a job, would it be just as easy? Some of the people are actually going to the States and you can work there in Silicon Valley or in Microsoft, people that are starting so at a yeah, it's pretty much the same. Yeah, it's the same. it's the same. You can work everywhere. I'm feeling when uh, I get up being on this campus that you guys like to, you know, work very hard, but you also like to play very hard, and uh, that's how it should be on a college campus. We try to have fun in between and, you know, go out, and there's a lot of activities on campus. So who's the smartest one out of all you guys? <laughs> Probably me. Mechanical engineer are better. Big time. Oh wow, this is like Big time. Never thought in my life I'd be doing this, but I'll tell you this. Man. Bet you my biology teacher never thought this either. So this is actually like a class right here? Yeah, this is a class. So you guys are like start... geniuses. <laughs> yeah, they are geniuses. They don't, they don't even need a pen and paper. They just remember it all. The facility uh, teaches the guys uh, to make a micro and a nano fabrication. It means that we need very small parts. You can see here on the yeah. monitor we have one, two, three micros lines fabricated in this, in this small wafers. In one, you can uh, put the, the wafers inside. You want to see, you think shooting a free throw is pressure? There aren't many guys that you know, have made rebounding uh, the way they make their living. And James has made rebounding his one trick.
Inside Israeli basketball is brought to you by Israel. Seeing is belief. Words cannot describe the dominance James Thomas has displayed under the basket. The former University of Texas standout has a knack for grabbing rebounds, and this season he's averaging among the top three in Israel. First of all, Jay is, a, is an animal of rebound, and is, uh, he, he got very, very good uh, location under the rim or in the paint, wherever uh, the shot's taken. Thomas, what a move! There aren't many guys that you know, have made rebounding uh, the way they make their living. And James has made rebounding, you know, his, his one trick that he does extremely, extremely well. You gotta wanna do it. I, I think that's a gift, because it's just not me on the team that's rebounded. We have Pat, Dante, our captain, Ito. Smith making a move. Tough shot. There's Kujikara to clean it up. And you know, at times it gets hard out there because we all fight for the ball, but that just shows you. We want it, and you know, um, I think I think the better rebounds, the more rebounds you have on the team, it's more possessions. So, so it makes everybody's job much easier. This is our biggest advantage because teams usually focus about one or two players, and against us, they need to focus on four players. And Thomas slams it in. Nice standing dunk by James Thomas. He does his job well. You know, I can't do nothing but. Uh, but be happy for it and uh, tell him to keep doing the same thing he's been doing. I mean, it all leads to heart. You gotta wanna do something to make your team better. And I, like especially a player of my caliber, um, I like to do the little things, rebound and defend. Yeah, I, I love the way James plays and I love uh, how mature he is as a person. Uh, he's a rock. He's a rock, a real pro. He's been bringing it. Uh, he's definitely one of the best interior players in the entire league. James Thomas has been a crucial piece for Maccabi Haifa this year, averaging a double-double for the season. That's it for us. Thanks for joining. We'll see you next time.